I got to share an amazing story with you. But in order to really appreciate the story, you have to know the person that I'm about to say who the story is about. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Shlomo Kalbach. You heard of him? How many of you, if you've not experienced a Kalbach Erev Shabbat, you don't know what it means to enjoy Shabbos. So let me tell you a story about Shlomo Kalbach. It was the month of Cheshben in the year 1994. The man writes, I was in New York on business. He was not a New Yorker, he was here on business. I was staying in the, I don't know if it's still there, Avenue Plaza Hotel on 13th Avenue, it's still there. Okay, I haven't been in Bar Park in a long time. I live in Brooklyn, don't ask me why, I don't get there. Every day I had a different lunch appointment with a different businessman. I was cutting deals every day, the man writes. And one day, when I had a certain business meeting with a guy named Yosef, he was a Haredi man, religious guy. Yosef and I did a lot of business together, huge amount of business together, with considerable success. He was a very successful businessman. He was also sincerely from. He was very religious. He was strict with Allah and strict with himself. As we sat there enjoying our lunch and discussing business, someone walked into the restaurant, a man who everyone knew in the world. In fact, his face was very known to every Jew in the world. His name was of Shlomo Kalbach, the famous singer. The man who helped the Jose a lot of ballet chuva, his guitar was slung on his back. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, he was a singer, he was a person who helped a lot of people become religious. His methodology was not considered orthodox. The way he did it made a lot of rabbis very upset in terms of how we congregated men and women together. The point is, he helped a lot of people. He changed the face of Judaism forever. However, some rabbis, some rishi shivot, let's put it that way, were not exactly in favor of his methods. So this is what happened. He started going from table to table, but he had a heart of gold and he loved all Jews no matter what. He went from table to table in the restaurant, regardless of whether he knew the people or didn't know the people, shaking everyone's hand. Some of the people admired him, shook his hand, and he was at a few of the other tables speaking to them. It took him 20 minutes before he got to my table, the man who writes. He extends his hand to me, I give him a friendly handshake. He extends his hand to Yosef and he's, handing, he's holding his hand. Yosef is not shaking his hand. And you know what embarrassment it is? Imagine you are a world-class personality. Your hand's hanging in the air and he's not shaking your hand. Thank God he's not Bukhari and he would have killed him. Probably, right? Because they, they will never stomach that stuff. So I said, Yosef, shake his hand. Shake his hand. This is Shlomo Kalbach. Shake his hand. I know he is. And I'm not going to shake his hand. And then people start dropping their forks when they heard this. You know, everyone's quiet and they see there's a conflict about to go on now. So I'm not shaking his hand. Rabbi Shlomo Kabach was turned red from embarrassment. He says, Rabbi Yid, my fellow Jew, all I want to do is shake your hand. Why do you refuse me? Because I don't like you, he says to him, and I don't like your derech. I don't like you. I don't like your derech. I don't want to be anywhere within your Dalit Amot. Anyone know what that means in Hebrew? And Amma is about two feet. I don't want to be within eight feet of you. The restaurant was packed with people. I've had lunch, by the way, with my wife there a few years ago. And there was nobody there who wasn't witnessing this drama that's about to unfold. Even the waiters who were serving food stopped. Everyone was just watching this scene play out. And the man writes, I've never been more embarrassed in my life. I knew Yosef to be a very religious guy, but this is impossible. But Shlomo says to him, I don't ask you to agree with me. I'm willing to listen to your views, but Rabbi Yid, I just want you to shake my hand. I'm not asking. I'm begging you, shake my hand. Rabbi Yosef looks at him and goes, I don't give my hands to sinners, to poshim. You know, hatati aviti pashati. So, you're a poshaya. I don't give my hands to poshim. And the man writes, I thought there was going to be a big fight. Rabbi Shlomo looks at him gently. He says, you know, it says, in the prayers of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, God extends His hands to the sinners. Even God takes sinners' hands. Does that mean you're not going to give Hashem the opportunity to take your hand? Rab Shlomo says to Rabbi Yosef, brilliant answer, but Yosef wasn't a stupid man because Yosef knew the next Pasuk. He says, you're right, but you're only quoting part of the Pasuk, he says. It says, You're right that God extends His hand, but He only extends His hands to people who do tshuva. And you're not a man who does tshuva! By this time, half the restaurant was crowded around that table, watching this scene play out. Rabbi Shlomo says to Yosef, what will it take you to shake my hand? You know when I'll shake your hand, Yosef says? When you do tshuva. And what if I promise to do tshuva? Rabbi Shlomo says to him, what good is your promise, he says. Who guarantees that you'll keep your promises? I hear people make promises all day long. 
All the words of Shlomo thought it over, he looked very serious. He takes out his guitar and he starts to sing a song. And he says, a Jew wants others to shake his hand, even if he's not a tzaddik, even if he went very far, he's talking about himself. Even because he had to go and help people, he got a lot of klipos, which is a lot of like tuma. But he still wants Hashem to stretch out his hand to him. And then he starts to sing, You Hashem, extend your hand to sinners. And your hand is ready to accept Palei Tshuva, the people who come back to you. And it's hard to do tshuva, he says. How can I do tshuva? I had to go in the mud and get dirty to go get Jews who were shooting heroin and cocaine and all these places that Rosh Hashivot would never be found. And he says, Rabbanu Shalala, master of the world, all my life I went into the mud, into the garbage to collect diamonds for you, to shake hands with good neshamas, pure neshamas, who only wanted love, who only wanted to be judged favorably. And I brought back many diamonds for you, Rabbanu Shalala. But I got dirty. You know what happens. You know what they say, a plumber who takes a job in a church to fix the plumbing, but he comes out dirty. Because unfortunately, yeah, you get the check, you got $5,000 to do the job, but you're not the same guy. Because you went into that place, you're dirty now. So he says, I went into the garbage to get Jewish neshamas, but I got dirty. Now I accept upon myself to do complete tshuva. He's doing it right there in the restaurant. Because it says that you, Hashem, extend your hand to Baal Tshuva. And then, you know what he does? He starts saying the Vidui by heart. Al Chesh Chatanu Lefanecha, Al Chesh Chatanu Be'onis. He knew the whole thing. The Al Chesh from Yom Kippur, he starts saying it one by one in front of the whole audience in that restaurant. And guess what happened? Rabbi Yosef gets up and hugs him. The man didn't want to give him his hand to shake. They hugged each other for a long time. There wasn't a dry eye in the restaurant from the crying. Rabbi Shomo looked at his watch and he had a flight to catch. He said, I'm late for my flight. He had to get to Kennedy Airport. He began making his way to the exit, but everyone in the restaurant wanted to shake his hand and hug him because what they witnessed that day was an amazing thing. Three hours later, the man who writes the story says, I phoned Rabbi Yossel and said, did you hear the news? What news? Rabbi Shomo Kabach left the restaurant. He made his flight in JFK. And just when the plane was landing, he had a heart attack and died. Died! Rabbi Yosef started crying. He just cried and cried. The man who wouldn't shake his hand. He couldn't take it. He felt that he was responsible for the death. And they told him, it's not your fault. No, not only you're not, it's not your fault, because of you. He went to Olam Abba clean. He went to Gan Eden clean. He did Shuva right before he passed away. And guess who was on the plane? Rabbi Saul Meir Lau, former chief rabbi of Israel, one of the great rabbis who himself was a Holocaust survivor. He saw me allow was a giant. He was on the same flight. He says, I can say testimony because Rav Shlomo was playing the guitar on the plane. And you know what he was singing? Hazeh Hashem, Kilo Tamu, Kilo Chalur Hamav. God's kindness is amazing. It never ends. This is what he was playing on the airplane. God's kindness, God's mercy is infinite. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of what Shuvah can really do for us.